Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to RC Haven. Today on our table, we have the Arma Mojave Grom. Uh, we're going to be doing some upgrades on this truck. Um, I just got it in a couple days ago. Um, we, I, we do have the Arma Typhon Grom, and we ended up uh, breaking the CVD in the front. We were jumping the ramp, and one of the CVDs broke. Just like a freak thing, just broke and fell off. So on that one, I ended up putting HR uh, front axles in it. I didn't do the rear. The rear is dog bones on all the trucks that they sell. Um, the only thing is, is in the front of the trucks, they're all CVD. The back is dog boned. So the, what we're going to be upgrading today on the truck is the metal axle and wheel hex set B, which is ARA311231, which gives you the hubs and the metal axles. And in the rear, it just gives you the metal uh, hubs that go in the back. Um, because, like I said, the rear is dog boned. So let's just jump right into this, guys. And I appreciate you guys stopping by our channel. Um, hopefully, we'll be making a lot more videos. I plan on keeping this truck uh, probably stock brushed for a while. We did put a brushless in it. It was a little wicked kind of fast. It's like all over the place. I uh, really didn't kind of like it that much. So I ended up putting the brushed back in it. So I'm probably going to do a little bit of research, try to come up with a better brushed motor and change the gearing around. I did got all bought all the motor mount sets for it, so I can pretty much put any kind of gearing in it I want. I'm um, probably end up putting a fan on it and so on and so forth. And we'll get down when we do all that. Probably make some videos on that too. So what you're going to need is your Arma wrench that came with your set. Um, it has the hex. Uh, for the tires and it also has the allen key and that's pretty much what we're all we're going to need um, I would probably suggest since you're taking the plastic off it's probably like a small screwdriver and I'll show you why in a minute so let's jump right into this and take the force the top off that's it just pops right off so what we're going to end up taking off right now is we're going to start taking off all the tires so I know this is time consuming, so we're going to take off the tires. I'll just lay these off to the side. I'm not sure if they give you new nuts or not. I think they do. And this is pretty simple and easy to take this apart. Like I said, this is for people that have never done this before. This is kind of like a step by step and you can do it any way you want how you want to take it apart I usually just take off all the, all the tires first not one at a time so we got all the tires off set them off to the side set the nuts off to the side so now on these they have the special design that holds the the wheel hex is on and like I said these are plastic and even the hubs are plastic you're going to use your allen key and you're just going to loosen them up and they should come right off just unscrew them and they should just pull right off and there's the plastic hex and there's the plastic hub so we're going to do all four, like a production line. It's the way I kind of like to do it. Some of them are a little hard to get off, if they are hard to get off, since they're since we're not going to be using these anymore, but I mean, you can save them. I'm going to use a pair of my trusty old needle nose and just hold on to the hex hub and then loosen it up. You can also do is leave the tire on it. I'll show you on the other side which will make it a little bit easier if you don't want to hold it with a pair of pliers or a pair of needle nose. I have a whole bunch of tools in there. Just first thing I grab was a needle nose. Um, there's that one. Like I said, if they're a little hard to get off, just take your little regular head screwdriver and turn it underneath and it pops right off. So I'll show you on the other side what I mean about the tire. You can leave the tire on. I'll set the tire back on there after you took the nut off. And then the tire will hold it from spinning. And then you could just keep twisting it like you're taking in the nut out. I mean, the screw out. I'll take it off there because it's loose enough now where I can just loosen it up. I 
hopefully this is not going to be a really long video. And then this one over here, I didn't put the tire back on, but we're just going to use the trusty old needle nose to start it. It's pretty tight. Like, I mean, these plastic parts will last long, but if you're, you're, like I said, if you're jumping ramps and stuff like that, you definitely want to uh, change the axles because they are plastic. A couple smacks and hits. I mean, armor is armor tough. So that's pretty much it. So as you can see, guys, we got all the hexes off, and then now we got little hubs left. So what I'm going to do now before I start taking the rest off, I'm going to open up this bag with all the parts in it. And then we got, yeah, we got new uh, wheel nuts, hex hubs and pins. And then here's all the axles. These are the fronts because they're CVD, like I said. And then these are the back. Like I said, it's just a it's just the, the hub in the back, because they're dog bones in the back, they're not CBD. So that's those. Throw that in the trash. And then these look like they got little grub screws in there. I guess they go into the, you know, right into the hex hubs. Okay, we'll get to that part. So what I like to do is I want to, I want to do the front first, because I think it's a little bit easier. I mean, the back's very easy also. So what we're going to do is there's uh, four Allen keys. There's one on each side, of course, on the top. And then you got one on the bottom right here, if you can see it. There's one there, one there. So there's four we're going to be taking off. So like I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side at a time. I'm not going to get too far ahead. And you're just going to take the Allen key out, flip it over, and do the opposite side. And then you just take it, lift up on it, and it'll just pop right out. And there you go. There's your stock axle. This is metal, but the hub itself is plastic. On my Typhon, they were a little bit hard getting out. Um, as you can see, the bearing came out with that, and that's what I was saying about the screwdriver. I just put it in there and pry a little bit on each side to get the bearing to move because like I said there are plastic and when it gets hot of course you know what happens with plastic and metal kind of like fused together so you definitely want to get that bearing off because you need to use that bearing again and I will be saving these hubs it's being a little difficult there to get off of course see what else we can use. Let me use a pair of tweezers, see if we can get the tweezers in there and pry it up, hold on to it. There we go. And I'm just using the tweezers, as you can see, it's just prying in between, when I got it started, prying in between to get the bearing off. And pull on it a little bit, there we go. There's one of the stock axle and hubs, as you can see, they're plastic. And like I said, a couple good, really good whacks and hits on the tires are landing wrong that's just gonna it's gonna snap right off tire is gonna go rolling off and it's plastic and then we're going with a, a solid you can see the difference it's solid steel there's no you know to worry about plastic or anything like that or it's snapping or breaking off like i said it's a really good upgrade uh, i'm doing it now just because i like to jump ramps a lot so i'm going to put the bearing back in here on this side and to make sure the bearing seat's in all the way, you can use this tool and push your bearing in, the one end or the other end. That's how I did the other bearings on the Typhon. And then all you're going to do is take one of the axles, and then I will put the bearing back on here on this side. It's being a little of a pain in the neck. It slides on, so this way it's a little bit easier to put it together, as you can see. And then, I do not have the plastic cups. I mean, I have plastic cups. I don't have the upgraded metal cups, but I will be purchasing them. I just wanted to do the axles first. I didn't have problems with the cups. I had problems with the, the CVD breaking off where the plastic was. And you just kind of line it up in there. 
get your axle in there. You'll see when you once you took it apart, you'll see how it goes back together. Some people like to take the shock off, which I can show you if we take this shock off here, it'll be a lot easier getting in there so you can see it. And you use your trusty old armor tool they give you. It's one screw to take the bottom screw off for the shock. Like I said, this is on the Typhon, and the Typhon was a little bit different. So just move that shock out of the way. And you just line it up, as you can see, right in the hole. And then what I like to do is start one side and then do the other side. And then we're going to put our Allen keys back in, the Allen screws that we took out in the beginning, back in. And I mean, I don't like to crank them, crank them, but once I feel it's tight, that's it, it's tight. I don't want to go cranking on it too much because it is plastic and I don't like to use a drill. Because the drill, if you go fast, it will get it the plastic hot, which is not good. So that's it. So that's one side done with the axle in. And we got the other front side to do, and the back's a little bit easy. You'll see with the back, I'm going to put the shock back in on this side. Not sure how great my lighting is in here. I have a little bit better setup next time I make another video with lighting. So we're going to get that started. Put this screw back in for the shock. And believe it or not, with running the metal with the metal bearings, everything's going to run a lot smoother. Um, and then you're going to know that it's not going to break on you when you hit a jump really hard or land on it like on the side or something and the wheel goes flying off. So we're going to do the other side. You can see this didn't take too long. Like I said, there's one screw at the top. On this, I call this the, uh, a C hub because it's a C. It goes like that, like a C. Most of the armor cars, I think, are like that too, have a C hub. So we took the one screw out on the top. We're going to take the one screw out on the bottom again. I'm trying to give you guys a little bit better picture of what it looks like. So we got two of those screws out again. And we're going to go ahead and take the shock off. So it makes it a little bit easier for us since I told you guys to take the shock screw out. And if you guys like this video, um, definitely hit the like button and definitely subscribe to our channel. Like I said, we'll have some more videos on probably repairs and upgrading some of our armor vehicles. We do have some Traxxas vehicles. Um, we have a Slash, we have a UDR, um, we have a Rustler, we, just a, a few Traxxas cars we have. We're pretty much armor guys. So like I said, this one is pulled right out. You see the bearing got stuck on this one again. So we're going to do the same thing what we did with the other side. If the bearing comes off easy, I used to try to get my nail underneath there and try to get it moving. But since I've been running it, it probably got hot swelled up a little bit on the bearing. So I used to use a screwdriver, as you can see, and just kind of like screw, turn it. The screwdriver and just turn it in a circle. Like I said, there are, some of them are a pain in the ass to get off. And then once you get it started, like I took my tweezers and put it underneath and just kept prying up on my tweezers and she come right off. Simplest way to do it. That's it. That one's off. There's the bearing. Now what I do is put the bearing on the axle, which makes it a little bit easier pushing it in there. And we're going to put it in the C-hub. Bam. And make sure the bearing on that side's in all the way. Like I said, line up your dog bone which is CBD, but it's the same thing as like a dog bone, run it up into the middle. And like I said, I like to try to put one side in first and then put the other side in. Or you can do them both together, however you like it. And we will go and put the screws back in. Hopefully they'll come out with a, a steering links in the front 
not the adjustables. I see they have them on the website already, but I hope they come out with the, the, the whole steering block in the front, like aftermarket, because I noticed the screw up in here uh, on mine was a little loose and it kept tightening it felt like it kept spinning so I ended up putting a little bit longer screw in there um, and it felt like it got tighter I don't know if they used too small of a screw or mine was just a little janky but hopefully they come out with a steering block that would be nice to put in there okay so we're done with the front we're gonna put the screw back in the shock The only thing left we have to put on here is the aluminum hubs, which is an, also a nice upgrade. I mean, if you had a lot of torque and speed, um, you're probably going to be stripping the plastic ones out like instantly. So that's the front. And they're spin pretty good. So on the back, pretty simple. Um, what I like to do on the back, move these tires up out of the way again, is I like to take off the shocks because it helps a lot. The bottom screw for the shocks not the top not the whole shock you can take the whole shock off if you want and you can see mine's got some wear on it i've been jumping ramps running through rocks my son's riding the typhon crumb i was running this and believe it or not both of ours are equal speed which is pretty cool and i think the typhon grom is 18 tooth this is 18 i mean 19 tooth and th and this one's 19 and that one's 18 so it was pretty crazy how they're pretty much close to the same speed and we're running the same battery. So I'm just taking off both shocks in the back and make it a little bit quicker. Because we're not changing, we're going to, we're changing just the hub in the back now. We're going to leave the dog bone, as you can see, we're going to leave the dog bone in there. And I will be, like I said, I will be replacing these cups with the steel cups they have out. Just so it doesn't strip out, but I'm not putting a lot of torque to it besides what the motor is, a 28 turn I think it is. And then on this, you're taking this top screw out, which is right here. Move the shock up out of the way. The shock wants to keep hitting me. And then make sure you separate your screws. You got the two for the shocks and then the longer one for that. This just pops right out. As you can see, the whole entire dog bone came out. So it's just one screw you got to take out. And this one's a little difficult. This one was really tough on the other car, on the Typhon. And we're just replacing this now. We're just replacing this plastic hub with the steel one, as you can see. It's nice. I like that. Beefy, too. So you're not going to break that. If you break that, then uh, something's wrong with it. With the, with the cast, I don't think they're cast either. Well, they probably are. They're probably machined. I'm not sure. I'm not a machinist. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put the bearing on it. And we're just going to slide it in. And it's in there. And put your dog bone back in. I usually put it into the car first. Line it up. Put it in there. Slide that in there like that. And you only got one screw in the back. You don't got the two C hubs, which makes it a little bit easier. When you have big hands, it's kind of hard to get in there to get these little things. There you go. That's the screw in the back. That's it for the one side, and we're going to put the shock back in on this side, just so this side we know is done. It's nice that Arma gives you this tool, like takes off pretty much almost all the screws. They even give you a little baby Allen key. I guess that must be for the motor, I mean for the pinion gear on the motor. But this is a pretty neat tool, I like it. And on, and on my Arma, I ended up taking one of the one of the clips that was in the bag, the bigger clip for the shock, because it kind of sags down in the back a little bit. 
and I put one clip in for my suspension just for the rear and the front. I left it the way it was stock. I didn't change nothing in the front. And it made the, made the truck ride a little bit better. So we're going to do the same thing on this side like we just did with the other side. This one's kind of weird. I don't know why they did it that way. But as you notice, you see the screw is in the back to take it out. On this side, the screw is in the front, which is kind of weird. So what I'm thinking is this hub is the same hub on this side as it on that side. So they didn't have to make a cast for two different casts for it. As you can see, if I took this off and put it on this side, it would fit. Um, as I was telling you about the hub, the casting, as you can see where the screw is on the opposite side, is in the front. So you got to kind of take the shock off and lift it up so you can get that screw out. So that's what we're working on right now. We're pulling this screw out of here and do the same thing we did with the other side. We're gonna pull the top of the hub off. The axle comes out, I mean the dog bone comes out. Pull the axle out of the back. This one came out pretty easy. And we're going to replace it with the metal one. Put the bearing on that. Push it into the hub. Put my dog bone on the inside first. And then on the outside, line it up in the groove. Probably you can't see that well because this car is so small. <laughs> and you just line up the top. And we're gonna put the screw back in on the top on this side. And where did that one go? This one's gonna go in. So that's pretty much it. Your axles are all in the front and rear. Like I said, I don't like to crank the crap out of these screws. Cause like I said, it is plastic. That is like tight enough. Be nice right when they start coming out with the hubs and stuff to replace all this with aluminum. I'm really not an aluminum guy, but the C hubs would be nice. And put our shock back in. And we'll just put our shock back in and our axles are in. So we're pretty much almost done. Sorry. Uh, so Back to what we were doing, sorry, having GoPro issues. Um, we opened a bag of the the new nuts for the the uh, tires and the hubs, and we're opening up the hubs right now. They do have little, uh, little grub screws that go into the hubs. So, and then you got your little pins, your little, I call them T-pins, or whatever you wanna call them. So what I like to do is, not sure if this is gonna fit that. Maybe a little Allen key we got in the kit will fit. And yes, it does. I like to do is start these into the hubs. It's a little grub screw on all four of them. And definitely don't wanna lose them on the floor. So I like to just start them a little bit. I'm halfway in. And they already have blue Loctite on it. So you don't have to put any Loctite on these. So we got all the grub screws in there. And then all you're gonna do is take one of these little pins. And I like to do is pull up on the axle a little bit, slide it in the hole. That's what she said. Slide it in the hole, make sure it's Level on both sides and then put your little axle in there. I like to pull on the axle a little bit so I know it's all the way through. And then tighten up your grub screw. Give it a little raw. And that's it. And that one's on. And you're going to do all four like that. Use all the pins.
sometimes you got to push down on the bearing. The sucker don't want to come through. And then put your little hub on it, just like that. Like I said, I, I like to either push with my finger on the inside and make sure that hub is all the way seated down onto the bearing. Just like that. Kind of like test it to make sure they spin freely, which they do. And then do the same thing with the front. Pull up on the hub a little bit so you can get your pin started. As you can see. Get it in there. Like I said, I usually push my finger from the inside. Push the hub up. Make sure that hub's all the way up against it. And tighten her up. Sorry about it guys, we've been having I've been having GoPro issues, a brand new GoPro. I don't know what the, the deal is, maybe it's overheating, I don't know. But kept shutting off on me. Brah, that one's tight. And the last one. Put a pin in there to give you two extra pins, which is pretty cool. And put your pin in there. And your hub on. Like I said, I like to push with my hand to push it out more. You got to make sure your pin is in there. Because your pin ain't straight back and side to side. Your hub ain't going on. Like this one. It's being a little booger. I might have the Allen grub screw a little too tight. She's being a little bitch. Let me try a different pin. Try a different pin. It might just be me. Yep, that was just me. I even tried a different pin. They're both all the same size. And then just... Crank it on and make sure they're tight. And then usually I could go, you can go around and take your wrench and make sure all these screws are tight. Which mine are all tight. You don't got to worry about no screw in the middle now. And you got your new, the new nuts for the tires and just... I'm going to rotate mine. Boom. I put one side on first. Start the nut by hand. And do the same thing with the back. Use your tool. Make sure, give them a little twist. Make sure they're tight. I rotated my tires. I knew which one, but the front and back. That's it on that. Same thing with the other side. They look kind of cool too. Look at that. Matches the red tires. Unless you got a, the, the blue one with green tires. And thanks guys for definitely watching my videos and being with us uh, doing this upgrade. We'll be doing some more upgrades on this when they come in, and I'll probably be making some videos to help everybody out. I like helping people out. I've been into the hobby since the early, I would say late 70s, and early 80s. I've been into RC, and that's it. And then I kind of like give her a little bit of a push, make sure they turn really well, and she's stock again. But like I said, I had it uh, brushless. I'll probably end up putting a little fan on here besides the fan here because this motor does get a little warm. Might have even change pinion gears. I'm not too sure yet. But that's it, guys. And, hey, I appreciate everybody sitting with me and with this upgrade. And if you liked the video, definitely hit the like button and definitely hit the subscribe button. If you want to see some more videos from us, uh, we'll definitely bring out some more videos. And thank you very much, guys, and take care and have a wonderful day.